You're watching Estuary News. I'm Luke Adams. In the headlines tonight, the MP for Gainsborough says he's not happy about the closure of RAF Scampton. A pensioner with dementia goes missing in Hull and the hunt for old Christmas cards in East Yorkshire. And later in tonight's programme, I'll be talking to Sheena Austin and Kaylee Virgo on the World Scout Jamboree. Before that, Gordon Meredith and Mariana Barbara on a new production in Beverly. But first tonight, the MP for Gainsborough is not happy about the closure of RAF Scampton in Lincolnshire. Sir Edward Lee says efforts need to be made to preserve the heritage of the site and that proper funding is available for a museum to be developed. We reported yesterday that the Ministry of Defence will sell the airbase, which is the home of the Red Arrows, in a bid to save three billion by 2040. A Facebook group has been set up calling for the site to be saved. A petition has also been set up on the official government website. Police are urgently trying to trace an elderly woman from Hull who went missing this morning. 86-year-old Brenda Taylor, who suffers from dementia, went missing from Trinity House Rest Homes on Annalaby Road. She is wearing a black skirt and a black white top and also has her arm in a pot cast. Anyone who may have seen her is asked to call Humberside Police on 101. Fire crews were called to tackle a large blaze at a care home in Hesdell today. Officers were deployed to the old coach house shortly before 7am this morning. Two residential sheds at the back of the property caught fire, which saw smoke spread into the care home. Staff and residents were evacuated, but no one was injured. Now, Christmas Day may still be some 140 days away, but Hull History Centre is already getting into the festive spirit. They are calling on people to send in their old Christmas cards, which will form part of a new exhibition that looks at the history of the humble card. The centre is looking for historic cards that date back to the 1870s. Elspeth Bower, archivist at the centre, says that she's particularly keen to receive cards that tell a story. We want some Christmas cards from you, some historical ones if possible, because this year in 2018 we're celebrating 175 years since the first Christmas card was sent. And that was sent by a gentleman called Henry Curl in 1843. Um, he had the misfortune of having too many friends um, and he wanted to send them all a generic greeting. So he got an artist friend of his to design a card um, and he just sent good wishes to all his friends in that manner. The idea of Christmas cards really took on because we had the penny post and we had the railways. And so within the 18, late 1800s, Christmas cards, the sending of them really grew and grew. Um, and what I'm looking at in the exhibition really is to see if we can sustain Christmas cards for another 175 years because as we know, there's different ways of communicating with the World Wide Web and much cheaper ways of communicating because the cost of sending cards now um, and receiving them is quite a lot because you pay for the card, then you pay for the stamp and um, as we know, postage is quite expensive now. So it's big business, but a lot of young people are choosing to send greetings over the internet. So that's the interesting thing, I think. I have had a couple of things already, um, including a Hull City Christmas card from 1974 um, and a really nice example of a New Year's card um, from about 1900, which is really good. Um, it was really sort of specially embossed and everything, and, and that's the kind of thing I'm looking for, something a little bit different with a story behind it, because if you can tell me a story, um, I can put it in the exhibition that we're planning in November and, you know, it really brings the, the card alive if you've got a story behind it. A portrait of the anti-slavery campaigner William Wilberforce will be exhibited in Hull. Sir Thomas Lawrence's portrait of Wilberforce will be on display at the Ferrens Art Gallery for the first time. It's part of a major new project launched by the National Portrait Gallery. Lawrence's unfinished portrait was one of the first works acquired by the National Portrait Gallery when it was established in 1856. The work will be on display in Hull next year. 
A derelict cinema bombed during the Second World War in Hull has been taken into public ownership. Hull City Council has taken over the running of the National Picture Theatre on Beverly Road. They hope to open up the building and turn it into a museum. The local authority says they initially planned to make the Grade 2 listed building safe. The building is one of the last remaining ruins from World War II. It hasn't been used for nearly 80 years. Funds to stabilise and renovate the site are yet to be raised. Yesterday saw the premiere of Bridlington Spotlight Theatre's Summer Seaside Spectacular. The show didn't fail to live up to its name with a feast of music, dance and family comedy in traditional seaside style. Written and directed by Amanda Holderness, we asked her how her directorial debut went. I think it went absolutely fantastic. I'm really happy with how it went. Um, everyone seemed really happy with what they were doing and the audience reacted really well. It was a challenge. It was quite stressful at times um, but I've enjoyed every moment and just coming up in the past few weeks has been really intense, really good, enjoyed it a lot. It's just fun, um, lively, entertaining from the 60s through to present day. The cast is about 22 altogether, which is quite a large cast. Would I do it again? Um, at the moment I would say no, not for a while, but I think the bug has bitten me, so who knows what to say. It's been an absolutely amazing evening. We've had a sellout, you know, and it's, uh, it's been great. And if that's how the performance was tonight for the rest of the season, then we've got a great season ahead. Um, through the summer we've got, um, starting on Wednesdays, we've got Dick Whittington, the pantomime. On a Friday we've got The Greatest Showman, which is a film to sing along with Hugh Jackman for the next 10 weeks. And we've also got a Rhythm and Blues show, which is live every Thursday in August. So it's a busy calendar and a busy super season. The Met Office has issued a yellow weather warning for East Yorkshire later this week. They say thunderstorms are expected on Friday afternoon and some properties may be at risk of floods and power cuts. New figures have revealed that more than a thousand primary school children in Hull are severely obese. According to Hull City Council, it's thought that children aged between 4 and 11 are deemed to carry excess weight. The figures have also revealed that childhood obesity rates are higher than the national average. Villages across the East Riding are tackling rural crime. A village in Withenwick has set up a neighbourhood watch group after properties and businesses were targeted by masked thieves. The Withenwick group says rural communities are particularly vulnerable to such crimes. I'm joined now by actors Gordon Meredith and Mariana Barbara to tell me about their latest production set to be performed in Beverly. Good evening, welcome to the programme. Thank you both very much indeed for coming in. The Twilight Radio Show is the play you're going to be performing. Tell me a little bit, a little bit about that, first of all. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's a spoof radio show. Um, we, we've, we've been writing together for a couple of years now and we've been d developing a project which kind of grew and grew and grew. And we were spending a lot of time writing and not not getting on with performing, so we, we wanted to develop something else that we knew we could stage and, so, and you know, put some of our writing on and, and we came up with this idea of um, creating a, a platform to show some of the other material that, that we both had already. Yeah, that's right. So we both had written, I had written some um, radio plays in the past and then uh, when we were looking for this other project, I just took them out, we put all the material on the table, we thought, what do we do with this? Let's do a radio show. Um, it's, it's a stage play uh, in the guise of a radio show with a live audience. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah. so, so the audience are going to actually be seeing you, which obviously you yeah. wouldn't normally see if yes. you were listening to the radio. Yes. So what can the audience expect from this performance? It's, so the, the audience at the theatre performance if you like are then becoming like the studio audience so if it was a studio audience watching a radio show, show happen um, so they will see the DJs 
uh, Stewie Stew and Loopy Lou. Uh, so they'll see the DJs introduce the show and anchor all the programmes. Uh, and there's been lots of different features throughout. So we've got um, we've got radio plays, okay. we've got Agony Ant, we've got um, Creative Corner. Yeah, we've got like a workshop where uh, for for writers. Um, we've got uh, the news, weather, sports, um, shipping forecast, <laughs> um, and some of the um, Western music. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and of course, the thing that's great about radio is is that that what you hear is you know is elevated because that's all all you that's the only sense that you've mm -hmm. got so it's going to be very strong on like sound effects and 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 sounds in general and the emphasis is going to be on the you know, on what you hear but the fact that the audience in the theater can see it as well will will just add an extra bit of comedy it is a comedy yes. so it's a great visual bonkers. aid mariana yes how long has it taken you both to script and devise this production a few weeks, a few <laughs> we a month, a month, about a month. Yeah. I mean, because part of the material had already been written yeah. by both of us. We both had sketches okay. that we could just be performed. Um, and then we obviously, as the spine or the structure of the show became clear, we had to write some more stuff for it. Um, but so it didn't take that long, although no. we have been working intensely on it. And that's <laughs> the difference. It, we've given ourselves a deadline get the show yes. booked in, promote it, okay. then start writing. We have 20 okay. seconds left, Gordon. Very yeah. quickly tell me when and where is this performance going to be? It's on place. at East Riding Theatre in Beverley on the 9th and 10th of August at 7.30pm and you can get tickets online or on the door, but it's best to get them online in Lovely. I wish you all the best with the production. Thank you both very Thank much you. indeed for joining me tonight. Join me after the break when Fred has all the latest sports news and I'll be talking to Sheena Austin and Kayleigh Virgo on the World Scout Jamboree. Welcome back, you're watching Estuary News. Still to come tonight, Fred brings us all the latest sports news and Sheena Austin and Kaylee Virgo will be telling me about the World Scout Jamboree. North East Lincolnshire Council is to upgrade its IT equipment in a bid to prevent cyber attacks. £600,000 will be spent to bring the local authorities' computer operating systems up to date in order to be in line with the latest security software. The authorities' computers must use Microsoft Windows and Office to be fully compliant. Members of the council's executive will be asked to approve the investment in the software next week. The supermarket chain Tesco has announced it plans to open a new type of store in Immingham. Reported to be called Jack's after Tesco founder Jack Cohen, the store will challenge discount stores such as Aldi and Lidl. The new retail format will be operated separately from the core Tesco business with different benefits. A total of 60 stores are expected to be operational by September this year, including in London and Cambridgeshire. The chain reported profits of £1.3 billion last year. Humberside Police are holding a family fun day on Saturday. The event at Cromwell Road Police Station in Grimsby will see people being able to experience police work, examine a crime scene and learn how to do CPR with paramedics. British Transport Police will be there to talk about the dangers of trespassing on railways. There will also be advice on water safety and mud rescues. The event follows on from last year's Nino Day, which attracted thousands. The fun gets underway from 10am. Lindsay Lodge Hospice in Scunthorpe is launching its first awards ceremony for staff and volunteers. Patients and families can nominate someone at the charity who goes the extra mile. Nine awards will recognise the work of individuals. These include Carer of the Year, Team of the Year and Exceptional Fundraiser. People can make their nominations via lindsaylodgehospice.org.uk until the 10th of August. An awards ceremony will take place in September. A bumblebee safari takes place in Beverley next week. Attendees will learn about bees and can create a bee to take home. The session will be led by wildlife artist Michelle Davey. It's part of East Riding Council's Kids Go Wild programme. Further events will be taking place throughout the summer. The bee safari is on Tuesday at Beverley Park's local nature reserve on Long Lane at 10am and 1.30pm. Now, three scouts from our area have been selected to go on the World Scout Jamboree in America next year. I'm joined now by Sheena Austin and Kelly Virgo, one of the scouts, to tell me about the adventure ahead. Good evening. Thank you very much for coming onto the programme. It evening. sounds like it's going to be a great adventure. It's going to be, like, amazing. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to go. And 
when I got that letter to say I got in, it was just a like wow face all the time, like, constantly smile on my face. Like you're still pinching yourself with excitement. Yes. And you're quite right, it is a once in a lifetime opportunity because this World Scout Jamboree Sheena, I believe, happens every four years, is that correct? It does, yes. So every four, four years, Scouts can apply and they get to go to a different country in the world. In 2019, it's been held in West Virginia, but it's also including North America, Mexico and Canada. And Kaylee was lucky enough to be picked for the one next year. How was you chosen? Um, it was basically a selection process and we had to apply and basically persuade, show ourselves that we're capable and ready to go. And basically we had a training camp and a selection weekend and basically 36 were picked from that to attend to represent Humberside, which is Unit 31. Okay. So yes, on the selection weekend, uh, we invited 80 scouts from our area and we put them through interviews. We had different crafts for them to do, different activities for them to do, team building challenges. And uh, we had the hard task of picking the best 36 out of that group. But you Katie was one of them. Pick the cream of the crop. Well <laughs> we done indeed, for getting yeah. there. And I believe while you are at the World Scout Jamboree, Jamboree uh, Kelly, next year, it's a double celebration for you because you're going to be celebrating your 17th birthday. Yes. Well, I'm always away. I'm never really at home on my okay. birthday, so it's normal, really. But it's going to be a great opportunity to just be there anyway. So just a bonus on top that I'll be celebrating my birthday Absolutely. as well. Sheena, last, uh, at the last Jamboree, there was 33. 3,628 people from 155 countries, so it attracts a lot of scouts worldwide. It does, yes, yes. We are lucky enough to be represented by over 200 countries at the next World Scout Jamboree, so it's a great opportunity for scouts from all over the world to mix and meet, learn different cultures and get to work with each other. We could be camping next to anybody, Canadians, Mexicans, Australians, it's just a fantastic opportunity to meet other people from all over the world. A global event and yes. perhaps to make you know, new, new friends. lasting friendships as well. Yeah, well I've already made so many friends already through connections like Facebook and things like that. Like I've made friends with people who are going from Wales and Scotland and hopefully people from other countries soon to find out. Excellent. Excellent. What are some of the things you're going to be involved with when you actually go to the Jamboree next year? Um, well, there's different aspects of the Jamboree and obviously the first bit is the main actual Jamboree. So there's like an opening ceremony and in that first week there's lots of, ac lots of activities with uh, on this campsite and there's like climbing, archery, water sports, different things like that. And again, you get to meet a lot of people throughout that activities and adventure. We also do a city experience, so we go to a big city in America and we go see what the culture's like around there. And we also do a hosted hospitality, so we're going to go stay with a scout group from that America and see how they run things over there differently to how we do. Sounds like it's going to be a great programme, but to get there you need to raise, I think it's £3,845 each, isn't it? Yes. So how is your fundraising going so far? It's going really well. I'm about over £3,000 now and it's, to be honest, it's been a lot of little things that have helped with that, car boots, cake sales, little fundraisers that it just helps push things along. It may seem small at first, but slowly it all builds up together and that hopefully the outcome is going to be great. Well done on your fundraising efforts. Sheena, if people want to donate to this cause, how can they make a donation? Uh, so there are various ways that you can do that. Because we're spread all over Humberside, it's quite okay. a nice way to reach quite a few people. We have an easy fundraising page so if people want to do their shopping with quite a lot of shops if they go onto our uh, easy fundraising and look for World Scout Jamboree uh, Humberside we are on there. Uh, Kaylee also has her own GoFunding page Excellent. as well. Yes yeah, she's very techno savvy. <laughs> They're geared up. Absolutely yes. geared up yes. um, Definitely. I, you can get access to that through my Facebook page which is KJAM2019 which I also have a link to a YouTube channel as well so people can follow my Jamboree experience as I go. Excellent. We also have a Facebook page which is open to the public, so if anybody wants to come and find us on Face Facebook, we post videos in there on, and things that what we've been up to, and it's not all about the fun, it's, we're raising money, we're getting out into communities as well, so for me the World Scout Jamboree isn't just about the three weeks that we're over there, it's, it started last year when we picked our unit really, so yeah, we're very active. And lots to look forward lots to. To, have to. Have you started packing yet? <laughs> 
No, not quite. We have obviously have our unit kits ready. Like we've got our t-shirts yes. that we're wearing now, <laughs> but a lot of that packing will start like just before, no, so we're time. ready and we know. Sounds we've got like everything. it's going to be fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very Thank much. You. Now head spread with all the sports. Hull City secured their best pre-season game by many miles. That's according to midfielder Marcus Henriksen. The Tigers drew 2-2 against Newcastle United at home last night. Following the game, head coach Nigel Adkins continues to ponder over the outcome of the outstanding additions he wants to make to the team. He's unsure if the bids for Oliver Norwood, Jiri Scalak and Connor Townsend will successfully materialise. Henriksen remains in high spirits despite the draw. We just have to fight and work hard for each other for the first game right until the last, he says. This is a young, talented group and we are all determined to do well for this football club. In rugby news, Lee Radford has named his 19-man squad for this Friday's fixture against Hull Kingston Rovers. Josh Griffin is among the players named. He hasn't been with the Black and White since their game against the Robins back in May. Siku Manu returns to action after a three-match suspension. Dean Hadley, Janzen Turgut and Jack Logan failed to make the cut. Hull Kingston Rovers have also announced their squad for Friday's game. Notable absentees are Danny Maguire, James Greenwood and Mose Masseau. All three players face suspensions following the latest verdicts from the RFL's match review panel against Friday's game against Wellington Wolves. Greenwood and Maguire both face a suspension of one game, while Masseau faces a ban of two games. Players who will take part in Friday's game include Adam Quinlan and Robbie Mulhern. In other KR news, two young players have signed their first professional contracts with the club. Owen Harrison and Adam Rooks are England internationals at youth level. They've both been training with the first team squad throughout the 2018 season. Harrison is the son of former Rovers player Chris and nephew of ex-Hull KR forward Des. He signed a three-year contract with the Robins, whilst Rooks has signed a two-year deal. And that's all for the sport from today. Back to Luke in the studio. Thanks very much, Fred. That's it for tonight. My thanks to my guests for joining me on the surf this evening. The World Scout Jamboree sounds like it will be great fun. If you have a new story, then please visit our Facebook or Twitter pages. Details are on the screen or email news at estuary.tv. Phone our news desk on 01472 You can write to us at the usual address, Estuary TV, Nuns Corner, Lacey Road, Grimsby, North East Lincolnshire, DN345 BQ. Until tomorrow, from all of us on the team, have a great Wednesday evening. Good night.